Welcome back once again. This week we are painting ourselves a Primaris Marine. We're going to use colors inspired by last week's video where I took a look around my hometown, Louisiana, Missouri, and I color matched some stuff off of some of the reference material there. Nearby I've got these four colors, Rainy Gray, U.S. Field Drab, Steel Legion Drab, and Dryad Bark for our primary palette here for this Marine. One of the first things we'll do is go ahead and do a little bit of pre-shading over our black primer with some white ink and using the airbrush. Just kind of spritz that on very lightly. Pick a general direction, usually top down, maybe a little bit forward toward the front of the marine. And also make sure you've kind of hit the legs a little bit. Sometimes they're a little bit more hidden than the light would indicate otherwise based off of a pure zenithal highlight. Now that we're sped up a little bit, we're going to start laying down some base coats. I'm going to use some Steel Legion Drab to start off here. And I'm going to put this on kind of thin over the pre-shading that we did with the white ink. Try not to muddy that up or overbear it. And we're going to go back in and work Dryad Bark into the shadowed recesses to make sure that we have nice saturated shadows. Again, using the airbrush, we'll use a little bit of U.S. Field Drab to blend up on the brown areas. Alright, pretty good brown base coats. Let's go ahead and work in a little bit of our rainy gray. We're going to use the airbrush to lay this in on both the shoulder pads and the helmet using a little bit of just control with the airbrush on the shoulder pads and some silly putty around the helmet to prevent overspray. I also begin basing in some of the trim on the marine with that triad bark base tone again. And that includes hitting some things here that we're going to hit with uh, some non-metallic gold in a little bit based on these colors. At this point I also start mixing in a little bit of moldy ochre into my color scheme. The US Field Drab is not too much brighter in uh, value than the other drab, the Steel Legion Drab, so I'm adding a little bit of ochre here and hitting some edges, hitting some blends, 
and you'll notice I'm starting to bring some of that US field drab as well as the moldy ochre over the uh, dryad bark in the areas around the trim where I'm going to add in some non-metallic gold. Uh, we'll be using our primary colors black, white, dryad bark, US field drab, and moldy ochre as our primaries for our non-metallic gold. I'm going to use a plain matte black in the joints of the armor where there's this flexible stuff. So just block that in, make sure you got a nice tight coat on all of these. That's all we need. I tried to add in some rust blooming based on some of the reference that I had seen in some of my pictures in last week's video. So I used a bit of black to start with, with a little bit of dryad bark mixed in kind of made some spots around the bottom here. Built on top of that with some burnt orange and then finally some orange to make some really, really kind of poppy orangey iron oxide rust spots here. Um, not sure I'm happy with the final result, but it's good enough for government work, so good by me.
So I continue adding some edge highlights to the white areas with pure white over the gray that we have and using some of the moldy ochre and US field drab on the brown areas. Now I'm going to bring in some of that matte black again and do a tactical symbol on one of the shoulders. I'm just freehanding this. This is a bit of practice for me as well. Keep your lines sharp, just block in everything. Use center guidelines here like what I'm using to get the arrow kind of even and keep practicing. On the other shoulder, I've created a symbol for my river runners, which is a catfish silhouette. Let me just dot the eye there. It's all done, just plain matte black paint. And on the tactical symbol, I'm going to sketch in kind of a fancy L in honor of Louisiana. I decided to go back over the bolter and base it in with a rainy gray. I kind of did this by hand and then blended it in with the airbrush and I used matte black on all of the other bits outside of the casing and the grip here. I'm not quite happy with the finish because of the amount of paint that I ended up applying, but I am at least happy enough with the result to like the color scheme here. I do blend it up with a little bit of pure white at some of the edges. And I'm going through some of the panel lines here with some darker colors, mostly that dryad bark, and mix that with a little bit of black to get some shadows. Just kind of touching up some areas, you notice I'm still hitting edges and highlights. I use pure white to edge out the rainy gray, etc., and the moldy ochre on the browns. You also notice I've done a base. This is a preformed base from Secret Weapon Miniatures. I've used the same colors, mostly Dryad Bark, US Field Gray, and rainy gray here. Just kind of wet blended and mushed around on the base a little bit. And I actually included a little bit of green paint here as well and on top of that uh, we added a little bit of our Magimix to the mix. So as I finish this up and go to attach the marine to the base, I have to reflect and say that I really enjoyed this project and I actually want to do this again with some slightly different reference material. Uh, I really had a good time with this. I think after everything is said and done, I'm fairly happy with how the scheme came out and the overall composition of the marine from the base to the top of the head. And just let's take a little bit of a look at the source material specifically that we drew our colors from again. Here is the Mississippi River. And it is muddy, it is deep, it is murky, just like what I hope I conveyed in the marine here. And the limestone rocks, the muddy waters, the sky, and even down to the rust and kind of general just muck about the river. I hope that comes through in one of my river runners here that we created today. And let's take a look at the final product. 
here it is. A little bit of non-metallic gold, a little bit of white and gray shading, definitely lots of browns and neutral tones, even a little bit of rust and corrosion. I think I included a lot of things that I really think about when I think about my hometown. And I hope you really enjoyed this, this kind of study into something based off of real life inspiration. I had a great time. I want to do this again. So until next time, have a great week and keep painting.